On the day the world was supposed to die, Eldrin Valtorix savored his excessively sweetened coffee, just like any other ordinary day. He ignored the panicked shouts and screams outside his office in the Masters of Sorcery Guildhouse, that is, until he heard a familiar four times knock on his door, in the rhythm only Liriel Venestra could produce, with such consistency each time. Come in, Eldrin commanded, his voice steady as he took a final sip of his coffee. You knock even on the day the apocalypse came, Eldrin remarked, a wry smile forming as Liriel entered the open door amplifying the distant cries from outside. Yeah. I feel like our manners and humanity are at the most important today, Liriel said as she stepped into the room. Eldrin gave a slow, thoughtful nod, placing his cup on the aged wooden table. Have they succeeded? Liriel's eyes flickered with a hint of sorrow as she gently lowered her head and shook it from side to side, her gesture a silent testament to their failure. To the void, Eldrin cursed, his words sharp, his lips pursed in frustration. Their plan had failed. Where are they? They are gone, Liriel answered directly. Dead? He probed further. Worse, she murmured with her head bowed down. They are corrupted. They are at the front rows of their army, knocking on our doors. Two weeks ago, they sent Thraya, Velithar, Kalis, and Serilun as a last-ditch effort to save the dying planet from the unholy threat and it would seem that their efforts have failed. Eldrin knew the plan was never going to work, but he clung to the belief that his brother, Velithar, would somehow, as always, pull through and would defy the odds by coming home triumphant, having saved the world once more. It's time! Liriel's voice snapped Eldrin from his reverie. His brother was gone, not dead, but lost. Yet there was no time for mourning. The world's end was today and maybe they could still save the humanity itself. Eldrin nodded and stood up with his characteristic lack of haste as if he had all the time in the world. That's how he had always been. His mother told him stories that he was perhaps the most patient kid in the existence of the planet, never in a rush, never in a panic, always slow and measured approach to everything, the complete opposite of his brother. He grabbed his dark green cloak, embroidered with the black lines mashed with small golden details on the front side, and put it on in one swift motion before buttoning his coat. With a fluid motion, he grabbed his wand from the holster hidden inside his coat. Liriel grabbed two vials from her coat pockets and tossed them to Eldrin. They are about to attack, and we will have our window then. Exiting his room, Eldrin glanced through the window. His view was not of the front gate, where the enemy amassed, but of the main square where people scurried in panic, their shadows elongating under the morning sun piercing through smoky clouds. The Masters of Sorcery Guildhouse, a grand rectangular building, enveloped a serene garden at its heart. They descended the stairs to the ground floor, weaving past frantic apprentices. Turning corners, they emerged into the garden, where seven of the remaining founding guild members awaited, their expressions painting a picture of their failed plan. Before Eldrin could mutter a word, Vaziva expressed her condolences. I am sorry about Velithar, she said with a sincere voice and true sorrow in her eyes. Thank you, Eldrin said, but we have no time to waste. The clock is ticking. So, Vaziva continued, what to do? I want to fight, Rokas jumped in, swinging his axe around. We fought for decades against them, Eldrin countered, his tone measured and we have been slowly loosing. Every day our opponent gets stronger while our numbers dwindle, and here they are now knocking on our doors. At the last human stronghold. But we can't just surrender like that and take the whole planet with us. Rokas protested, his fury visible. We are not surrendering, Eldrin assured with a calm voice. We are sacrificing everything for a chance of humanity's survival. 